Hi, Clubbers. This is Miss Joanne, and I am coming to you electronically again today. And we're going to be going over the Lesson 4.6 in your handbook. Before we do that, let's open in prayer. Father, I pray that you will bless this time together. We are meeting in a much different way than we have in the past, and I pray that you will just make what I have to offer the children clear. I pray that they will be encouraged to study your word. In thy name I pray, amen. And if you want to open your books, you can follow along a little bit or just um, listen to this. If you did your homework or your handbook, you were asked, what is your favorite dessert? Now, you may have put an ice cream sandwich, an ice cream sundae, some cookies, some cake. I brought one of mine with me right here. These combine chocolate and peanut butter, two of my favorites, in a fudgy, no-bake cookie. When I make these, I have to get them out of the house as fast as possible um, because I really, really like them. Now, if we have a favorite dessert in front of us, we may be tempted to eat it very fast or eat too much of it. That is not showing self-control. God doesn't want us to live our lives out of control. When we become, believer, become believers, God gives us the fruit of gentleness and self-control. We discover self-control when God's grace helps us to control our actions. And gentleness when our attitude is under God's control. When our gentleness is when our attitude is under God's control. These two characteristics of God, gentleness and self-control, are ones we should pursue or go after. We do that best by keeping an open relationship with God, praying to him, asking for, good, for gentleness and self-control, and reading our Bible. The Holy Spirit is anxious to give us those blessings. Gentleness is not weakness, but it is power under control. It's a humble and gentle attitude that does not seek revenge. Having self-control means denying your sinful nature. It is choosing to act in a manner worthy of God instead of action, acting based on how you feel. Now, I have a personal experience here I want to tell you about. Um, two weeks ago, my yard was all cleaned up. Flower beds were raked out. Sticks were picked up and put in a garbage bag. And the yard was raked and mowed. As I looked out my bedroom window a week later, I saw that the neighbor who lives behind me and over a house was blowing leaves through the fences that separated the yards, right onto his neighbor's yard and into the back part of my yard. My attitude was, that's not right. How can he do something like that? What's he thinking of? I felt like dumping the leaves on his front porch. But I knew that wouldn't be pleasing to God. But I still wanted to let him know that that was something he shouldn't be doing and that people were aware of it. So what I did was I went out a couple hours later and raked up the leaves, put them in a grocery bag. There weren't a lot of them, and it only took me about three minutes. Then I wrote a note. No one appreciates you blowing your leaves through the fence. 
we have our yards all cleaned up. If you used a rake, you could put them in the bag that you have sitting in your backyard for sticks. So I took the bag over and I put it on his front porch. And then as I went home, I asked God to make me more patient with people in general and to work on my attitude toward this person that I had never even met. Jesus is our best example of gentleness and self-control. Jesus forgave the people who crucified him. A gentle person does not allow people to treat him or her poorly. Instead, that person chooses a humble and gentle attitude that does not seek revenge. Again, we discover gentleness when God's grace helps us to control our attitude, and we, deserve, we discover self-control when God's grace helps us control our actions. It means denying what our sinful nature may want to do, like dump the leaves all over his front porch along with the note. When we choose to be gentle and self-controlled, we are an example and an encouragement to those around us. Now our memory verse for Lesson 4.6 is 1 Timothy 6.11. But thou... O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Now during this time of the coronavirus, uh, we are all home a lot more, spending a lot of time with our family. We can pray and ask God to develop those qualities in us. Our family will benefit from this. And when we go back out in the world, we can please God by showing more gentleness and self-control with others. Now the code word for this lesson is Red Sea. Moses and the Israelites crossed the Red Sea on their journey out of Egypt. So when you speak to your leader to say this week's memory verse, they may ask you or you can just say, I know the code word, it is Red C. I want to thank you for tuning in to watch this video and let's close in prayer. Father, thank you for the truth that's found in your word. We, help, we pray that you will help us to be more like your son, Jesus Christ. I pray that you will uh, watch over each of us, keep our families safe, keep our clubbers safe, and we look forward to being able to meet again soon. In thy name I pray, amen.